Executive Council who locked on to this engagement via Zoom, friends from all the media houses, distinguished people of Limpopo, ladies and gentlemen, in Tegan, Dimazari, Tober, Sloshile, Lochan, Huyemedach, good afternoon. I think I have catered for all languages in Limpopo, at least. <laughs> Program Director, please allow me to start by expressing my utmost pleasure emanating from the recent rains, or should I say heavy rains, we are experiencing in our province and throughout the country. When it was initially announced on the 20th of January 2021, we were warned to expect a severe tropical storm called Eloise. Weather Bureau experts cautioned us cautioned us to guard against widespread damage to properties, roads, bridges, and flooding. Little did we know that in the case of Limpopo, Eloise was among others bringing us much needed relief through heavy rainfalls. We are told by those responsible that currently all our major dams in the province have significantly improved their water level to at least about 55%. The latest that I was getting this morning is that most of them are at least at 90, or perhaps should we say above 86% full. That's a much awaited relief to this province. We are, however, on high alert to monitor any eventuality that may arise as a result or as a direct consequence of these heavy rains. To date, a considerable number of cases of destruction to property due to these rains have been reported and they have been attended to. On the same wavelength, we express our deepest condolences to all the families who have lost their loved ones as the aftermath of Eloise is felt. So far, statistics at our disposal shows that in Capricorn District Municipality, two death, ca death cases have been reported, while in Mopani District, three death cases have been reported. That is why our Provincial Disaster Management Team, under the guidance of MEC for COPSA, MEC Makam, is on standby to assist should any eventuality arise. We indeed dip our banners in respect and honor of those lives that we lost, and at the same time, mourning the deaths of those that we lost. Program Director, Today marks exactly four days since the arrival of, of the one million COVID-19 vaccine doses in our country. For this great achievement, Limpopo would like to thank President Matamela Ramaphosa and his leadership collective. As stated, the, dis the distribution of the, the vaccine will go a long way in protecting the population against the SARS-CoV-2 virus by interrupting transmission through achievement of the herd immunity. We are gathered here today, guided by our objectives, which among other six to reduce the morbidity and mortality caused by the COVID-19 virus through prioritization of high risk and vulnerable population, ensure readiness of the health service delivery platform for vaccination, ensure safe and efficiency delivery of vaccine 
to target population in the public and private sector, and lastly, to monitor and evaluate the COVID-19 vaccination program. Having gathered here, we are pleased that Limpopo has successfully established governance, co uh, coordination, and planning structures which are tasked with the COVID-19 vaccination process. Those structures are provincial executive management, vaccine technical working group, working work group, and the COVID-19 district vaccination task team. As you are all aware by now, the vaccine rollout strategy will be co coordinated by na the National Department of Health with the Provincial Department of Health and the private health sector participating also. But they will all be coordinated nationally. As such, the Limpopo Department of Health will coordinate the process through deployment of two committees, which are the COVID-19 Search Committee, mainly responsible for oversight and coordination of the COVID response and the Vaccine Technical work, Working Group, which will report to the COVID-19 Search Committee. The Vaccine Technical Working Group comprises of re representatives from various units at the Provincial Department of Health. Program Director, it is already common knowledge that the vaccine will not be immediately available for everyone. Therefore, a prioritization system will therefore has, have to be applied. In our case, the first priority will be given to the following categories. Those considered to be essential for societal functioning, those considered to be most at risk of infection and serious outcomes, age, those at the ages above 60 years, with comorbidity conditions. Those living in overcrowded settings and those who are most at risk of transmitting SARS COVID, I mean, so, sorry, SARS CoV 2 to others. As such, Limpopo will introduce the vaccine through a phased approach. Phase one vaccination will be to all the frontline workers in both public and private health sector. Phase two, to all the high risk groups, including persons in congregated settings, persons who are 60 years and older, persons who are above 18 years with comorbidities, and other essential workers, including and not limited to teachers, police, security personnel, funeral parlor personnel, retail food personnel, banking sector, local government, and officials of government, including minors also, etc. Phase three will be an open vaccination for all the people in Limbo. That will be Wonke Wonke. It is therefore important to note that currently, pregnant women or expectant women and children under the ages of 18 years will be excluded from vaccination since the group has not yet been studied for vaccine efficiency. People of Limpopo, currently, we have been allocated 44,526 COVID-19 vaccine doses for our Provincial Department of Health staff members. To date, 39 sites are ready to administer the vaccination process throughout the province. And as part of enrollment for the vaccine, all health workers will complete an online registration. This system will also be part of the consent procedures and risk assessment. Through all the system put in place, 
Limpopo has the capacity to vaccinate all the phase one population within a period of two to three weeks at the most. Program director, please allow me to join President Cyril Matame Matamela Cyril Ramaphosa when he said that no person or individual will be forced to be vaccinated. However, on our part, we are very conscious towards the, this vaccine safety. To, uh, let me phrase it differently. From our part as the government, we are very conscious to ensure that this vaccine is safe. And we will be monitoring that. Although the vaccine has been th uh, through phase three trial, we are ready to ensure that close monitoring and reporting of adverse events is critical, especially during phase one, because you'll be dealing with the frontline staff that time. We will use both active and passive methods for surveillance of this vaccine safety. Our infrastructure systems and control here in Limpopo are ready for the rollout of COVID-19 vaccine. That means that we are indeed on our toes. We are indeed ready to roll this vaccine out. MEC Ramatu and the people of Limpopo. As I have said during our previous engagement, which took place on the 14th of January, 2020, is it 2020 or 2021? Please be informed that the COVID-19 vaccine is safe. We have got no reason to doubt the safety of this vaccine for now, ladies and gentlemen, as government, both national, provincial, and uh, at local government level. This vaccine is currently one of the most trusted solutions as we march uh, as we march towards social and economic recovery. Coronavirus has so far destroyed economies and livelihoods. This inv invincible virus has caused more deaths in our communities, resulted in joblessness and negative, negatively impacted all in our livelihoods. And take it from me, it's not only here, it's throughout the world. I was listening to the news this morning. Even in the US and Latin America, um, some mo mobile factory, or should I say company, is actually closing down some of the, its sections because of the aftermath of, or perhaps the consequences, as a consequence of this COVID-19 uh, virus. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, the vaccine amongst others seen by all countries of the world as a positive measure towards the, the fight against coronavirus. The sooner we dispel the myth by the prophets of doom who are opposed to the use of the, of the vaccine, the better. I'm making, therefore, a clarion call to all of you never to be deterred, but instead appreciate the vaccine process because it is in your interest. It is going to save lives. In that spirit, Limpopo supports the sustenance of alert level three with the relaxation of most regulations under the Disaster Management Act. We are saying to our people, we are not out of the woods yet. As you shall, you shall have noticed that some countries are actually experiencing, experiencing uh, the third wave now. So we can't really say we are of the root, despite the fact that we have reached our peak, we are, um, the graph is now um, stabilizing. Therefore, 
we must please continue to avoid overcrowded areas like your funerals, soccer tournaments, weddings, shebins, taverns, and other mass gatherings. Because those remains super spreader events. Let us all continue to wear our face masks, practice social distancing, continue washing our hands with water and soap, and sanitizing. Our lives are more important than entertainment because life comes one and entertainment can always be postponed. Once a life is lost, it can never be regained. Our message remains the same as perhaps one of our forefathers used to say or said Moses Kotan, may the soul of his late wife rest in peace. He said, the future of our country, of your country, is in your hands. And it depends on what you make out of it. This government will continue doing everything in its power to contribute towards a lasting solution to our challenges. And you, our people, must always play your part. We are overcoming the peak of the second wave to, together, and together we can equally avoid the third wave of infections. And that can only be achieved through a behavioral change and the acceptance that all the rights as enshrined in our Constitution have their own limitations. There are no absolute rights. All those rights that you have in your constitution have limitations. In conclusion, please allow me to wish President Cyril Ramaphosa strength in his quest to find more COVID-19 vaccine for our country. As Limpopo, we are ready to ensure that we contribute immensely towards the presidential target of reaching population immunity. We believe that when more people are immunized, life will go back to normalcy and shattered lives will be restored. Once more, our heartfelt condolences goes to all the families, relatives and friends who have lost their loved ones during COVID-19 pandemic. Like Ngundi Watiango, one of the most refined authors and sons of this continent, said, let us work towards decolonizing our minds. Let us work towards decolonizing our minds. Many people today are disabled because of these stereotypes that goes with some of our cultures and religious belief. People who were supposed to have received polio vaccine when we were receiving it at our ages, that time, very early ages, are today crippled, disabled, due to the fact that they stuck to the stereotypes. There is nothing, nothing that will beat a person who can stand up early in the morning and say, I stand to be counted. I am going to take the vaccine. I can rest assure you that all of us, starting from number one of the province, MEC, Ramatu and the like, we are going to take the vaccine to prove to our people that there is nothing wrong with this vaccine, but there is everything right with this vaccine. So let us go out there and vaccinate. God bless South Africa. Morena, Avolukes Chavasa. Kamoka Rafoli, Kamoka Rapel. 
Thank you. Colleagues from the media uh, and those who my, of my colleagues who are joining us virtual, I think the first questions that uh, uh, Kat has raised, it's in the, the number punching. Now did we come to the 44,000 that we are using? This is the, the number that is coming from our personal system. These are the employees within the Department of Health. Now, what the National uh, Department of Health did, they went to PESA and find that Limpopo has got 44,500 uh, employees that are on PESA. And that's why we were given that, uh, that, that number. But however, you will note that we are saying we are not only 44,000 because there are people who are contracted. For instance, our security guards, they are working with patients. When you arrive in our facility, the first person you come into contact is a security guard. We also have got those who are working with the Red Cross NGOs who are supporting us, NGOs like ANOVA. You've got nurses employed by them. You've got uh, quite a number which we, we estimated and we did uh, the stats. It comes to around 6,000. We've already made a submission that we are shortfall of 6,000 when you look at frontliners. Hence, if you look at our, dist uh, our um, vaccination, Premier spoke of phase one and phase two. Then when you go into details and technical, in phase one, we have got phase 1A and phase 1B. Phase 1A, we are looking at a category of those who are generating what we call uh, aerosol generation procedures. Your anesthetists, those who are intubating, who are ventilating, they are at high risk. Those who work with your nose and your oral cavity, your ENT surgeons, they should be the first one to be vaccinated, your dentist, because they are directly dealing with the, where the virus is located. And then you will have another category, which is those who are working in the COVID world. You must start with those nurses, doctors, cleaners, and food service aid working in that COVID world. Then you will have phase 1B. Phase 1B is to look at the category of people who are in the admin uh, clerks, who are opening your file, your security guards, as I've already indicated. And then you then move to, to those who are uh, within the very same phase, 1B, but they are on category 4 and 5. These are, would be your admin clerks, your finance person, who is not necessary. So we are saying, even if the finance person is part of our PESA, but he cannot jump a security guard, even if a security guard is not. I think you would understand what, so that's how the numbers came in. So we are saying, during phase one, let's start with 50,000, those that we have. And we did the numbers to say, let's say you've got 200 vaccinators, and it's also addressing the question of training, which I think was asked by Tao. We have identified 200 train, uh, uh, vaccinators. Each vaccinator who would be a professional nurse will be allocated a, an enrolled nurse assistant to assist will also be allocated a security guard to protect the very same vaccine will be a pharmacist and all that 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 whole team we we are saying there should be groups of 200 already we have got 169 that are there that already we started the training if you remember last week we, we launched the training they are already being trained and then if you do your number punching correctly if we get 200 for now, we are at 169, which we, we are going to finalize the remaining and get to 200. Remember, we have got 10 days to wait for that vaccine. And we are estimating giving all the challenges to say on the 15th, we might be starting to vaccinate the first uh, person. So by the 15th, we would have trained 200. With, you, you, you say each one, you give them a target of 50 people to vaccinate. You can see that we will be able to deal with the numbers. That goes for phase two. We have made uh, another estimation to say we will need extra vaccinators. And again, phase three, we will need also extra vaccinators. But we will be building on the phase one that we are currently having. And then the second question is uh, the AstraZeneca. Is, is it the same as Pfizer? They, they, they are not the same. The, the AstraZeneca, uh, which we are currently having, it's a requirement in terms of the storage. You would have noted 
it's it's uh, the the storage we require to uh, two to uh, eight degrees, which is currently the temperature that we are storing our vaccines at the moment. You would have noticed that today we were launching a catch up for all those children who miss their vaccines. Where we are storing those vaccines, it's where this vaccine can be stored. So it's not a problem. We, we are going to have the capacity to store it because the current vaccine that we're having. Of course, when the, 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 the Pfizer, the biotech uh, comes, it, there will be a challenge in terms of the temperature. You have heard the minister, we have started to engage universities so that they can assist us in, in a, a premier, we need minus 700 degrees. We don't have in, in, in Limpopo. And, and also in the country. We, we are working on that with our universities that have already started with the work. But as it is for now, the current one, we are not having challenges in terms of storage. They also, they only differ with the, with the storage. Uh, in terms of the, the intervals, which you have asked, we give uh, the, the, the COVID shield, which is the AstraZeneca that we're having now. You give it today, the next second dose, you must give it between four and 12 weeks. Uh, the, 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 the other researchers are recommending that give the second dose between four, eight, eight and uh, 12 weeks, if you want to see maximum effectiveness. So, so that's what we're going, so you have, this is what we're giving today. So what it tells you is that we are going to vaccinate our healthcare workers with the first dose, let's say the 15th of February. That means the second dose, we are going to give it almost three months later. So that tells you by that time, we would have started with the phase two and we would have received even more other vaccines. We will now be knowing. You see, it's like when we started receiving the Wuhan, people who had no clue, but now we know what is happening. So we, are, we, are, we will learn whatever mistakes we will commit, we will commit it on ourselves. And then by the time we'll be able to, to, to deal with that. And the, the other difference that you wanted to know, it's, it's the efficacy. Uh, the AstraZeneca, the research says, its efficacy is between 62 and 90 percent, uh, whereas the Pfizer, the effectiveness is around 95 percent. So I think those are the, the few difference. And also the, oh, the, the Pfizer, you inject the first dose, dose today, you are going to have the second dose after 21 days, or just before 21 days, man. On day 21, you should have got the second dose. So, so that will tell you that we are, we, that's, that's that. But you know the, the Johnson & Johnson one, you only give one dose. So you see, Premier was correct that we have got a doctor in the making. <laughs> so the, the other question you have asked is about the doctors who, would, who are planning to object. As the, as the Premier has indicated, we are in a democratic state, as, and the President has said, we're not going to force anyone. We've asked everybody to, to, to register. But what we are doing, which is coupled with what Tavo has asked, you would have seen that the Premier has started himself. The invitation we send you is that I'm going to be vaccinated. Why not? So all the members of Executive Council will be joining that campaign. We have already briefed uh, the Portfolio Committee on Tuesday. All the members of the legislature would be expected to also join in the campaign. And, and, and gradually, what I like is that the Premier also give you a basic example of saying how many people in, when you grew up would run away from school because they were afraid they would be vaccinated. It, it does happen. When, when something new comes, there will be all those objections. We know, we knew, there are people whose job is just to sit and object. And, and it's unfortunate that their voices becomes, few as they are, their voices becomes much more powerful. Maybe we are all to be blamed because we give them even a time for that objection. And, and not to say we shouldn't allow a descending views, but we are simply saying the voices of those who understand this noble cause, we are just going to make sure that it is much more louder so that people can see. I mean, people are crying, people are losing so many family members and the people who are saying they are objecting to this you look at their health profile these are people with no comorbidities these are people who health wise they know even if they get infected their body their immune system will fight this we are here worried 
about people whose immune system is also it's very weakened. We are saying let's not be selfish like we did during uh, December holidays. When we said let's not have parties, we went as young people and party and come back home. And in fact, those who are vulnerable, we made it. We didn't even knew that we were infected. We survived the virus, but those we infected did not survive the virus. So our, our campaign here must be to focus on those that we really would want to be uh, uh, assisted and to be saved. The fact of the matter is that uh, the third wave is on its way. If the third wave, that is why we are prioritizing healthcare workers. If the third wave is to come and find our healthcare workers at the stage at which they are in. Currently, how many are on quarantine because of being infected? We're not going to win. It's going to be more devastating than the second wave. So that is why it will be important for that particular doctor sitting in that corner. Because if you get infected as a doctor, you also risk to infect your own patients. So it will be good for them to come out and be uh, the vo voice of their own patients. Because by vaccinating yourself as a healthcare worker, you are also becoming a voice of the patient. So we will not lose hope, we will not force anyone, but we will continue to engage. We are meeting different structures. You, you have seen the South African Council of Churches has already pronounced themselves on the vaccine. We will also meet with all the influential people in the country to assist and support. So it will be a mammoth task but we are just calling upon everybody to say, we've seen what COVID-19 has done. We can't allow it to, 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 to continue to destroy our families the way it has done. Uh, I've already responded on the timelines and also the storage. I think I, uh, even the objections, uh, the Premier responded on the undocumented. I think we've responded. Um, yes, indeed. We remember we've got how many Borders, uh, the three or what? Uh, Bay Bridge, uh, Botswana, Zimbabwe, and what? But the Bay Bridge one is the biggest one. So we are going to try by all means to deploy people there in the areas of Mosina, uh, Makado, to ensure that they capture these people. So that at the end of the day, we, we, we know who's there, what, is, what, what kind of depth are we, are, we, are we supposed to close up? You know? So we can't now outrightly say we will be in the position to can vaccinate them. You know? We can't outrightly say that, but we, are, we will say we will try by all means to get hold of them. Uh, but uh, surely, as a government that has got a responsibility to its citizens. And we can't be ashamed of that. We've got, firstly, our responsibilities with our own citizens. After dealing with our own citizens, we will also, in terms of our constitution, we are also supposed to cater for those who are not necessarily our nationals. We will also deal with, them, uh, with, 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 with those undocumented uh, immigrants. We can't say simply because they are illegal in the country, they cannot get uh, medication, they cannot get the vaccination. We'll, we'll, we'll definitely get a plan of ensuring that they do get the uh, vaccination. But we'll start with people who are legally here first, before we come to those who are illegally in the country. I hope I have an answer to you. I don't think, I don't think there is any other the question asked, for, uh, asked by, by, by uh, Katleho is very technical and very difficult for me. It needs those who are still young, trying to, <laughs> uh, with uh, aspirations of becoming doctors one day. <laughs> like we said earlier on, this government is a caring government, and this is a disaster situation. It is declared as a disaster. So all disasters, in all disasters, governments must come in and assist the population. So all the vaccine that will be uh, procured and distributed by government will be free of charge. Mahalam for it. We that the vaccine is a very, very important intervention to achieve that herd immunity. And we're getting educated in the process. Herd immunity, you Google, what is herd immunity? And then you become on another level.
Thank you, thank you so much. Let's spread the message and uh, the, um, the campaign is themed, I choose vaccination. So let's go out there and say, I choose vaccination. Thank you so much.